the subject and the theme of your film. And why was it necessary for you to make this film? The subject and the theme of this film, uh, well, it's really, um, for me, it's not fun to talk about a film you already made. For me, it's really nice for people to watch. But yeah, this film, I started it uh, because I was uh, very angry and very frustrated. And I chose to tell a story of a very brave woman in uh, Egypt that they make me brave myself to tell my own story. And I think it was very important to put those voices in the front line because they were always, always in the back, back line. And uh, I concentrate and focus in, of course, you see, in sexual harassment and uh, uh, early marriage and uh, the way how they object to women, but also about, uh, mainly about the meaning of freedom, which is, goes for every human being, I believe. So for me, I tried to put my voice parallel uh, to those women voices to uh, question this world of freedom and who can own it in this earth. So it was very important for me. And I felt like there is a lot of women and human beings again, because yes, it is a film about women and it's full of women and it's woman voices and I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of every single shot of it, but I do not like to separate it from being a, a film experience and speak up about us as a human being because we are all human in the end of the day. And maybe I actually did this film to also discuss that, be, talking about men and women and, uh, and uh, the freedom of being. So I thought it was very important for me to talk about this and I never thought I would be the person to talk about it. I was, I was a little bit chosen. In this film, you put yourself on stage. You confront uh, men in the street with your camera. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I, and th that was the, the point of picking up the camera and go to the street. I didn't really, I had a lot of questions. And I was searching. Why? The way how the, the society think of us. I, am, I, I get into a point I really needed to know why. So I went to the street and I started to ask why. And I heard lots of answers. And there is a lot of uh, surprising answers, not only from men, from children. I mean, there is some scenes in the film, you can tell the way how they've been raised and the way how they've been educated. And uh, this is why I went to the street. Not only, I didn't really want to make a film about the, those accidents the horrible accident that happened to those women, that was just the start of the anger inside me. But I wanted to search and go on more deep about why actually we ended up to that point of the accident in the Red Circle. What make this accident and what happened to happen? So was I, I, I went to the street and I wanted to, I was, in the beginning I was trying to follow because you walk in the street, it's a street. You have the people sell stuff, you have people walking in the street, you have kids, you have, you have all kinds of levels in the society. And I think it was really interesting to see how people react. First, in the front of the camera. Second, for the question you ask them. It, it looks like they've never been asked this kind of questions or even think they will be asked this kind of questions. So I thought it's kind of a way to actually for all of us to realize where we are, where we are in our head, man and woman, human being in general. Because in the film, yes, it's a film about all of this woman voices. And also I am facing the man in the street, but also there is woman in the street. They are making me, trying to make me quiet. And they are thinking this is the way how we should be. And also you have the children in this park that the way how they express themselves, it makes me remember myself in their age because I was exactly like them and I thought exactly like them. So it was also a kind of a mirror for me at the same time. Yeah. I would like to ask you the same question. Um, what is the subject and the themes of your film? 
and why was it necessary for you to make this film? This film. <coughs> um, it's, it's a difficult uh, question to answer why it was necessary because it was I like I've always been working intuitively so somehow maybe also reactionary to things around me um, so I guess the intention was just to react to a certain thing that was happening in 2015 when I started writing which was uh, there was a huge mass protest in Beirut back then which was oppressed and lots of people started leaving the country uh, and I had left myself like earlier and a lot of people from my family had left Lebanon Um, and a lot of them actually discovered the hard way that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And they had to come back. And throughout this process of coming back, they had actually lost more than they had gained in a lot of uh, situations. And when I was faced with a situation where people were starting to leave the country again, I thought it was important to discuss this from a point of view of somebody who actually returns and what does it mean that sort of you're leaving home behind and trying to reconnect and recreate home abroad and that doesn't work out and sort of where do you, you find yourself. Um, so it's really sort of a talking about the story from a almost individual perspective, but also that mirrors the collective, like the family and also the people around uh, Jana, the main character. Uh, so the film follows her story actually at the airport the moment she returns from, from Paris. So the whole film's set in Beirut. And it's really about coming to terms with, with the past, with the regrets, with the fears. Um, and there's a whole like uh, layer of, um, of anxiety of the disaster that might happen in the film. And I think that's comes specifically from something I had also, I think, like as an artist or somebody who works creatively, uh, For a lot of years, I would actually stop myself from producing work because I would always think that something is, else is more important. Like whenever there'd be a crisis, there'd be a war, there'd be an attack. Uh, I struggled personally to sort of believe in whatever I was doing that actually it had value. I think it's this thing when you, I don't know if it's all over the region, but like in Lebanon, there's this idea that you have to somehow live in a bubble, live in denial of your reality to be able to sort of, you know, live comfortably. But I was never really able to disconnect from the reality around us. And that puts you in a precarious position. So I kind of put all these <laughs> fears and anxiety into the film. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that's, it was kind of intuitive. Like it's not like I had a purpose out of making the film except for trying to portray something that we as people living in Beirut or in Lebanon today feel and need to express, to somehow give like validity to a certain feeling of, of desperation without needing to justify it or without needing to find like answers or resolutions or happy endings. Like it was just, I guess, giving power to this hopelessness that we, we feel. Sorry, that was heavy. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to ask you too about uh, um, Jenna, your uh, female character, talks yeah. about the tsunami. Yeah, well, And did you feel that something te te terrible was going uh, when you did this film? The, how, how it's possible? Um, yeah, so I, I think what you're referring to is the fact that somehow it felt uh, like I was talking about the explosion that happened yes. before it happened because we shot in the beginning of 2020 and the uh, explosion at the port was in August. It was like six months before and it was... Uh, I was editing the day of the explosion. But I think, I mean, I think if you're trying to portray a certain reality of the place you're in, you kind of have to be in tune also and sensitive to, to how people feel and what's going on, to like, the, I guess, the unconscious of, of the reality around you. And we've always been living like this. Like, I grew up, uh, I was born in 85. I, like, I had the first years of my life, we were living in shelters, and there were Israeli bombings in the 90s, and then the 2000s, there were wars, and, you know, besides everything else. So I think you live in constant fear of something going wrong. Um, so for me, the idea of this fear of the tsunami was kind of like a metaphor that summarizes all these things. Because it wasn't, I didn't want to actually talk about these people and these characters from a position of them being victims also of like one event. It was important to summarize it like in this accumulation of, of anxieties and of traumas, of years of traumas. Uh, so I don't know, somehow the tsunami came in to sort of be that metaphor for all these different uh, layers. It's like a um, premonition. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, when the day I was editing and the explosion happened, the next day actually I called my producer and told him <laughs> that we were going to stop, I was going to stop editing because I, 
like just die immediately after the explosion. I felt it would be too violent to show anybody from Lebanon the film, although it's not really to the explosion directly. But just you know, this, the, the the weight and the heaviness of these feelings is uh, is very triggering sometimes. Um, but I think with distance, after having seen it also many times in festivals now, uh, I think it's important to talk about it about it because okay, in a way it was premonition but not really, it was just being in tune, I guess, with how we felt. And it might not be the, the last explosion or the last catastrophe that might happen to us, um, like, sadly. I mean, it's something that we have to accept and we have to somehow fight against and we have to talk about and, and discuss. Um, so I think that's the thing about the situation where, where, where I come from is that this fear of the disaster is constantly there. You're always living in like this almost vicious cycle of catastrophes. Thank you.